Hey y'all, this is Mitch Mitchell. I'm in another hotel room, but actually you've missed a couple of hotel rooms or at least another hotel room. So I'm traveling and this is an interesting time period because last week I left home, which is Syracuse, New York area, to go to Orlando, Florida for a wedding of my niece, Allie Thomas, who's now Allie Reeves, and her fiancé, now husband, Joshua Reeves. And it was a great time. It was a wonderful wedding. The bride was beautiful. This guy looks great. You know, I don't usually say that a lot about guys, but he just looks great. I wouldn't mind, you know, the, the body. Um, you know, I'm, what are you going to say? But uh, it was a fun time. I've had a great time in Orlando. And then we went to, the next day I went with her sister, my niece Crystal, to um, Universal Studios to take that tour because I wanted to see the Harry Potter stuff. You know, in past years and decades, everyone went there to go to Disney, but you know what? I'm a Harry Potter guy. So we went there and it was eight hours of thrills and torture <laughs> at the same time. Uh, because we walked a lot. It turns out when we first got there, they have a train that goes through two different theme parks that they built for Harry Potter, and the train was down. So we ate in uh, the Leaky Cauldron, of all things. We had breakfast there, and it got, you know, the cauldron, which has this big crack in it. That's why it's leaky. It makes a lot of sense. And we had breakfast there, and I had some uh, ice cream early on. It, it's probably the smoothest ice cream I've ever had in my life. But all the ice cream was based off of vanilla. Then they put that little flavor thing on the side. So, you know, it was basically just some vanilla ice cream. And I didn't eat all of either one of them. It was very good, but, you know, I knew I had other stuff to do. Went into the wine shop. Ollivander saw that. Um, Crystal talked me into getting on the mummy ride. Uh, if you don't like roller coasters or things like that, do not do the mummy ride. Uh, I didn't like it. I kept my eyes closed for almost the entire thing. And then when it was over, I had trouble walking. I'll admit it. You know what? I don't like roller coasters. And last time I'd been on anything like that was for my 30th birthday, 25 years ago. So I didn't like that. Uh, but I did like the Hogwarts train. If you ever get there and you get a chance to take the train, you've got to take the train both ways. But one of the things you have to get used to in resort towns, which I didn't expect to exit, is two things. One, the wait times are amazing. I mean, even for this mummy thing, it was basically 30 minutes. We don't just stand in a long line outside. What they do is you finally get inside, but then they wind everything around. So it, it's it's just something else. You just It's hard to compare. Uh, the last time I'd been in any kind of amusement park like this, and I don't count the state fair as an amusement park, was 1968. So <laughs> you knew I wasn't prepared for any of this. Um, and you're going to walk a lot regardless. I got to go through the Simpsons uh, thing, and I got to go through Dr. Seuss, and we didn't get to the Minions because it was 65 minutes to get in. I, I wasn't waiting 65 minutes for that. We got into this twister thing where, you know, I thought that we would actually feel what 100 mile winds feel like. Instead, it was kind of like an exhibit uh, based on the Twister movie. You don't really think about it. Uh, the way, you know, I didn't necessarily think of the types of movies or all the movies that Universal has made over the years. For instance, they had a Men in Black thing. I, you know, I didn't pay any attention to that. Uh, they had Terminator. They had the Transformers movies. I just have never really paid all that much attention to that stuff. Uh, but like I said, we were there eight hours and we walked a ton. I uh, even saw this thing that was supposed to be based off of some movie called The Lost Continent that I never heard of. And it was magnificent from the outside, but it was a restaurant. <laughs> that was kind of funny, seeing things that were restaurants. So that was the first thing. The second thing was getting used to costs. It was $17 just to park, and then you had to walk a mile before you could get to the park. That was interesting. It cost $136 for a pass to get in for the day for the two things. And for kids, it was $130. Big savings, right? And it's amazing how much stuff costs. For kids to get a wand, you know what? If you're a parent of three kids and they all want wand, you're spending 150 bucks because each wand was 50 bucks. Yeah, Mitchell wasn't buying no wand. Matter of fact, there were some shirts I thought, you know, it'd be kind of neat to buy a shirt, but they started at $35. Wasn't doing it. Oh, and by the way, they had Popeye there, and they had Scooby-Doo there, and Betty Boop, and a Lucy tribute. You know, it was just tons and tons of things. Um... We had lunch at a place 
pizza slices were seven bucks a piece. Uh, oh my god, they were huge, but it was still seven bucks a piece. And even that was a long line, and it had two long lines, so you could go in from different ways. That took 20 minutes, just to wait in line to get slices of pizza. Man. But it was fun, and if anyone who recognizes the dragon, if you know anything about Harry Potter, they actually have a thing of Gringotts ba uh, Bank, and they had this giant dragon on top of it, and periodically the bad boy would spit out some fire, and you just feel this burst of heat. And it was the coolest thing, I gotta tell you, that was kind of cool. But uh, overall, I couldn't see me going again. I can't see that. As a matter of fact, it's funny that I left Orlando saying, well, that was it. I'm never coming back. I can't see any reason why I'd ever come back until I get to San Diego and this morning's board meeting because that was more pleasure. This is actually more business and I'm on a business break right now. And the reason I decided to do a video now is because if I waited till I got home, I didn't know how long this video was going to go and I didn't want to do that. But I go down to the business meeting this morning because I happen to be a national board member and I sit down and I'm looking at the thing. It turns out next year's conference is in Orlando. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I didn't know that. So supposedly I'm supposed to go in January and then again in October. We'll see if that happens. So anyway, um, it's been interesting. You know, I stayed at a place called the Hilton Grand Vacation Club in Orlando. And one of the things I didn't realize is that there's a difference between hotels and these villas. And, I, you know, because mine was a Hilton, and I'm a Hilton member, so I used my points to get it, thinking I was just going to end up with this hotel room. I ended up with a suite, this gigantic suite that had a Whirlpool tub in it. This thing was massive. And what was funny is that every day I was there for, what, Thursday through Tuesday, and I put the thing on the door so that I wasn't disturbed except for one day. For the days I wasn't disturbed... They left these gigantic bags that were filled with towels and coffee. I had three of those <laughs> by the time I left. I thought that they would take care of it when I came in. You know, I had them clean the room on Sunday, and I thought they would just take their bags. Nope, they left it all there. So, uh, uh, what are you going to do? But it was fun. And where the wedding was and where my friends all stayed at was something called the Westgate Vacation Villas. And all of those were pretty big, too. Uh, by the way, I had a balcony, but I was on the sixth floor. There was no screen. Mitchell wasn't going out there. My friends had a balcony. They were on the seventh floor of where they were, and they were all screened in. So they let the kids go out there and throw the ball, which worked out fine. But it's amazing, these gigantic communities of, of what you would think were just condos or big apartments. And these are actually timeshares. And one of the funny things is that when I flew in from home to Orlando, I hadn't slept in over 30 hours because my friend had to get me to the airport by 4.15 in the morning. And so my mind said, well, why go to bed? I'll just stay up. And then I stayed up and stayed up and whatever. So when the guy first mentioned timeshare to me when I got here, I had no idea what he was talking about. My mind couldn't process it. And it took me a bit. To process it so people buy this time to go stay in these things and they're relatively cheap compared to how much everything else costs this is like a hundred and twenty dollars a night are you kidding a hundred twenty dollars a night to stay in something this massive uh, is just outstanding I mean that's amazing but that's just to stay everything else in Orlando expensive the gas isn't as expensive as it is in New York but everything else is just steep and I don't mean just at the hotels. So if you go to a place like Orlando, you have to get used to that. Now I'm in San Diego. And what this involved is a trip to Atlanta first. And then flying a little around four hours, a little more than four hours from Atlanta to San Diego. And of course, you have the time change thing in there. And one of the first things I learned is that they don't have a lot of Chinese or Japanese restaurants downtown. As a matter of fact, there's no Chinese because I asked at the concierge desk. No Chinese, and the only two Japanese restaurants they have aren't true Japanese. They're fusion, Asian fusion, and all they serve is sushi. Come on, really? And the other three restaurants are Thai. I don't eat Thai food. I've tried it. I've tried it. I don't like it. So they had Mexican, and they have Italian, and they have Irish, and I decided last night because I needed to eat dinner, I went to an Irish restaurant, and I ordered the shepherd's pie because I always order the shepherd's pie, and it was delicious. I can't, you know, I'm not going to lie. It was delicious. 
but it was probably a little heavy for me, a little bit more carbs. Uh, or it, maybe it was the Jeer Deli ice cream shop where I went in and had a three scoop uh, ice cream sundae with peanut butter and chocolate sauce. <laughs> hey, you know, it's what we do. You know, I figured that's the one day I'm going to kind of throw it out, throw, throw everything in there and just eat what I want to eat. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, but I went to bed. At home, it would have been 1 a.m., so I guess that's not really early. Here, it was 10 o'clock, and I just had to go to sleep. I was just exhausted. Um, sometimes you have to go with it, especially when you're, you've are you reached the age I'm at now. And I'm staying in a place called the Manchester Grand Hyatt. And I'm really close to the airport, but I'm also close to the bay and close to the ocean. And on the way here, I passed the Midway, this gigantic aircraft carrier that... I said, well, wait a minute, wasn't that sunk during you know, World War II? And it was, but they built another one, which I didn't know that. And then they decommissioned it, and it's stationed right out there. I mean, I can see it from my room. It's amazing. And I hope to get over there to get some regular pictures of it. Um, but, you know, I wanted to put this one out really quick because I've had a blast so far in this travel and some people say oh you lead such a glamorous life well not really you know yes i've been traveling out of town to work but i've been going to the same city for almost 18 months so that's not really glamorous uh, after a while if it had been new york city i might have said that was glamorous but you know i you know i can tell you now i'm in memphis and i've only got a couple more weeks there and then it's back home for a while and we'll figure out what we do after that but i wanted to get this one out there because who knows what I may have to say tomorrow or Friday or Saturday, although I get to go home Friday. But I won't get in until close to midnight once again. And then we turn it back around and we hit the airport again next Monday. Whew. I'm a rambling man. Anyway, oh, by the way, I'm going to give you a hint. I hope you've made it this far. A lesson I had to learn last night. Do not put cans of soda or probably cans of beer or anything else in your bags. If you're going to fly. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Lesson learned. Anyway, this is Mitch Mitchell. I hope y'all have a great day and hope you like the video. Let me know. You take care.